What's up guys? This is Night Angel and welcome to an episode of Warsaw where we analyze the enemies that are encountered in this game. So there are 32 enemies in total currently uh, on the very recent patch and I have encountered 30 out of 32. However, I do know well, one more enemy uh, that was just introduced in a recent patch uh, that I did not personally encounter but I do know what kind of enemy and then there's a background and characteristic uh, of the enemy and uh, I'll show you guys right after we analyze these 30 enemies here. As for the last one, I haven't seen it yet. I believe it might be a special enemy. Uh, so special enemies are only encountered in certain missions, like the Panzer IV and the uh, vehicle enemies, like th that are just really rare uh, encounters uh, that are the goals for a specific mission. So without further ado, uh, I'll go just go over all the enemies and I'll show you guys what their strengths and weaknesses of the enemies and then if you are prioritize if you should prioritize the enemies first or they don't do much damage and you can leave them kill them last. So first off we have the dog. With the high tensions of pretty uprising up Warsaw trained dogs found great use among the occupying Nazi forces. They are frequently deployed to intimidate concentration camp prisoners as a policing agent. So the dog is there uh, as an AOE thing, really want to see this unit because they have really low health and they don't do a lot of damage. But the one thing that they do have is uh, suppress and sometimes they have bleed. So those are suppress makes your and makes your units uh, unable to move and you can use your units and that can be detrimental to your overall strategy because you cannot use your units right however there are ways that to counter it that's uh, suppressing so dogs are not as uh, important to kill as some of the other units if you encounter them uh, together in a group i'm gonna have a like a rating on um, what I think, what priority I think you should kill these enemies at. For the dog, I would give it as a low priority. Okay. Dog handler. No military dog can operate effectively without a proper handler. Excelling in guard duty due to the intimidation factor they provide, such specialist pairs usually end up being assigned to prisons and railroad police outfits. In this special case, the unit in question belongs to the SS. So the dog handler uh, is actually at a medium a priority because they can uh, buff the dogs and then uh, so that the dogs can suppress 100% of the time and your units are unable to resist the suppress from the dogs. And also they, these guys, they operate from the back line and they shoot, they can shoot you. They do low to medium damage. They can uh, they can be terrifying uh, if left unchecked, but normally your AOE are able to veil them down, and then so you can pick them off either at the end or in the middle to end of the overall fight. So I would rank these as medium uh, priority. Then there's the Franco Mando, the sight of flamethrowers among German troops. Although uncommon, it's not altogether unusual, especially during operations that involve assaulting trenches and fortified buildings. Moreover, specialized variants of such troops are known to have been deployed to Warsaw with the express purpose of destroying culturally significant structures and, en en and engaging in terror combat. The Brecomando, only useful in the front two rows, they have only one attack, which is shooting their flamethrower, and they can only shoot their flamethrower at the front two rows. So as long as you push them back to the third row or the fourth row, they won't be able to attack, and then they are forced to use their action at moving. And as you know, moving costs one action, 
So while after they move, they cannot attack you. And then the way to beat this guy is you keep pushing them back. After they come up, you keep pushing them back after. However, if you get these guys to flame you, to use their flamethrower on you, then you can uh, either get burned or blinded. Burning uh, would take away 8 of your HP uh, if you are doing an action or at the end of the whole turn. Uh, and the flame will occur twice. And blind is, is there for a whole two turns. Uh, even after you use an action, the blind does not go away. So that can really lower your accuracy and your shots will miss rather than hit their targets. So I would rank this guy as medium priority because uh, his flames and the blind can be a really bad debuff. Although they don't do much damage, the debuff can uh, throw you off your game in killing other higher priority units. Next, we have the AT Trooper. While basic anti-vehicle guns are accessible to the majority of the German army, specialized individuals trained in the use of the Panzer Shrek rocket launcher may also be observed on the battlefield. Such operators are considerably more popular in dense urban infrastructure where traditional combat vehicles tend to lose their edge. So the AD Trooper. These units are basically the tank of the military units. They do a lot of damage. Although while after shooting they have to reload, they still can pack a punch and can kill your units really easily if you do not deal with them in a fast period of time. Now what do they do is that they can shoot this rocket at you and then you just would take a lot of damage. Usually the damage is around 30 and obviously the damage uh, scales upon the difficulty that you're playing and maybe uh, at around 20 if you're playing on easy and then the damage will scale up as your difficulty level scales up. But uh, I, since I have played on extreme difficulty, uh, I can say that th these guys deal up around 30 damage, th 25 to 35 damage uh, without critting. And if they crit, they can deal up upwards of 50, even 60 damage. They can one shot your units, basically. These guys are the highest uh, priority on my list. If you ever see this, these guys, you should want to kill them as soon as possible. Obviously, you cannot kill them uh, before they shoot their rocket. So you just have to pray that they don't crit and then your units survive so you can heal your units. One saving grace is that after they shoot, they have to reload, which means they have to use one of their turns reloading. They only have one action per turn. If they use their action on reloading, they're not shooting at you. So basically, you have a two turn window to kill this guy before he can shoot again. Now on extreme difficulty, this guy has over 100 health. So it's quite a, a challenge to kill them before they can shoot the second time. But normally, you shouldn't let them shoot a third time. If you cannot kill them before their second shot, then just do not let them shoot a third time. Because the more times you let these guys shoot, uh, the more chances that they'll crit and one-shot your units. Meanwhile, there are obviously other units shooting at you that can whittle your units down, and then this guy can then finish your units off if you are left unprepared. Next, there's the machine gunner. In contrast to allied military doctrine, German doctrines put great emphasis on machine gunners within units. Consequently, the Resch deployed their machine gunners front and center, with their riflemen serving more as support for infantry carried general purpose machine guns like the MG42. So, similar to the machine guns that your friendly units have, these machine gunners can shoot uh, area of effect. So, they can shoot more than just one unit at a time, and if your units are grouped together, 
they can shoot up to three of your units even though uh, most of the time they would only shoot two of your units and the damage varies from 10 to 15 sometimes if they crit it can go up to 20 but that's very unlikely now that i think about it i think that these guys would be medium high uh priority i have added two more priority categories into this uh, list just to give it more uh more ranking purposes they are not uh, as important as the AT troopers but they're definitely more important than the Dogland Handler and the Brand Commando. The good thing about these guys is that they don't have that much HP, which can be a saving grace since your AoE rockets can just kill these guys, uh, whittle them down at least, and then you can just shoot them through your pistols or your rifles. These machine gunners, they won't kill your units in one shot, but they can still do a lot of damage if left unchecked. Next, we have the Feldgendarm. The Feldgendarmerie units, or German Army Police, are generally assigned to oversee the areas on and behind the front lines and to maintain the discipline within the war march. Due to the nature of their duties, they often carry flashlights, a handy tool for signaling vehicle drivers come nightfall. These guys, they are quite a rare to encounter. Now, in just normal encounters, they're quite rare to show up. Normally, it's just soldiers. However, if you do ever meet these guys, they only carry a light machine gun which means their damage is not very high and if they ever shoot, they can shoot up to 2 units but like I said earlier, even if they shoot 2 units at the same time the damage is in the single digits if not only in the 10th so on my list, they're ranked medium low uh, priority nothing else much to say about these guys since their their health is quite low compared to some of the other, other units and they don't do a lot of damage. Then there's a Grenadier. In the context of the Wormash, the term Grenadier or more correctly Panzer Grenadier may refer either to the lowest rank of German soldiers or units of mechanized infantry. Despite the name, they are not restricted to wielding grenades. As should the need arise, they can provide supporting fire with their MP40 submachine guns. So the Grenadiers, as stated in the description here, they're the lowest rank of German soldiers, which means that they have really low health, and, uh, but of course they have more health than the dog. They have really low uh, attack damage because they're using, only using a submachine gun. And the one thing that might do a lot of damage is their grenades. The grenades can hit up to three units uh, if your units are clumped together and the grenades may set your units on fire even though it may set your units on fire the chance of it happening is very low the grenades they do three area of effect and they do around 15 to 20 damage uh, sometimes less uh, maybe 10 to 20 damage on my list they're ranked medium low priority. Normally these guys are the last of the enemies that I have to kill simply because they don't do a lot of damage. However, because they have uh, less health than the other units, I might focus these guys down just to get one activation out from the enemies. That's something to consider if you're ever facing the Grenadier. Because if you can kill these guys really fast, then the, then the enemies, they will lose one activation and then that gives you, your units more time to act. Next, there's the SS Grenadier. Members of the 3rd SS Panzer Division Tokenkov or Death Hand having been deployed to Warsaw as part of the 300 strong group to reinforce the city in the event of an uprising, they are renowned for having been formed from concentration camp guard units. Obviously, the SS Grenadiers are definitely better than the Grenadiers. 
these guys have a lot more health having more than 100 health uh, on extreme difficulty and these guys they have uh, a grenade throw and also they can have a, a rifle to shoot the bad thing about these guys is that their grenade throw can move your units around sometimes your units they want to stay in the back line so that they can shoot their rockets or shoot their rifles but if this guy is in play they can move your units and then it messes up your tactics also in addition to moving your units your units can also be uh, suppressed Th this means that your units cannot move back to their original position and you're basically stuck in your new position so these guys are a uh, supporting units even though they can still do quite a bit of damage themselves their grenade throw can also hit up to 4 units in a square formation, 3 units in a line formation and similar to the grenadiers in the, in the tens and rarely they can go beyond the 20s on my list the, the, the SS grenadier is around medium priority since they have a lot of health you can't really kill them really fast so that's something to consider now we're moving to the heavy weapons so the heavy weapons they're uh, set on the ground they cannot be moved after they're spawned uh, they can only uh, be killed uh, so you cannot move them at all no uh, abilities can ever move these uh, mg team as well as the next one the mortar team no abilities can move these guys so the mg team able to lay down suppressive fire on demand an MG team is usually composed of at least two people in order to efficiently share the burdens of carrying and operating their fully automatic defensive weapon in this way the assistant gun gunner can also take over the main firing duty in the event of the casualty so the MG team uh, as I said before they're a heavy weapon class and they can do everything in a machine gun can do suppress uh, area of effect a spray attack and they do quite a bit of damage in the tens sometimes they can go up to the 20s but that's rarely the case uh, the one thing to look out for in these guys is that uh, they can suppress you and suppressing means that your units cannot act so it messes up your plan nothing else much to say about these guys they're a medium to high priority for me uh, since they are still a heavy weapon class even though they're probably the lowest priority for me uh, of all of the heavy weapon classes alright then there's a mortar team equipped with a lightweight paratrooper compatible cruiser 8cm Granenwerfer 42 mortar the german mortar team embraces mobility and rapid action capabilities it is estimated that the properly trained crew can manage between 15 and 25 rounds per minute so the mortar team they're very high priority on my list since they are a heavy weapon unit they cannot be moved so the only way to kill this, these guys uh, is through full firepower you have to kill these guys simply through sinking a lot of bullets into them one good thing to note is that they can be bled they can be set on fire so through these damage over time skills and possibly armor penetration skills can kill these guys before they can fire too many mortars at you their mortar damage are around 20 to 30 so in the 20s and they can uh, hit two units side by side uh, and sometimes i've seen them hitting four units in a square formation they have two different types of mortars the one is a smoke screen so uh, they blind your units and one other is just they raw damage the smoke screen is around uh, 20 and the raw damage can go, go all the way up to 30 and one thing to note is that these guys they don't need to reload their reload is only for their damage ability but they can still hit you without reloading 
through the use of the smoke screen. So smoke screen equals no reloading and if they ever reload, it means that they're using their damage ability next. These guys are definitely a very high priority for me. Even though they have very high health, I would still kill them first, if not close to first. Next, Nebelwerfer. Used by the Nazis in almost every campaign of the war, the Nebelwerfer series of weapons is known for supporting a varied array of payloads and calibers. Within Warsaw, the most common types spotted are the 280mm and 300mm variants, capable of launching either high explosive 280mm or incendiary 300mm warheads. Its distinct projectile sound sounds have led the Polish resistance to call the Nebelwerfer either the cow or the wardrobe. So the Nebelwerfer basically is a variant unit uh, from the mortar team. The Nebel Warfare is also classified as heavy ve heavy weapon unit, and they basically do this do a similar thing to the mortar team. So these guys, like with the mortar team, they have to reload as well. After every shot, they have to reload. So they take a turn, like with the AE troopers, they take a turn to reload. But when they are ever shooting at you, they do close to 30 damage and that is an area of effect. So they have two types of damage, incendiary as seen in this description here, and high explosive which is an area of effect skill. The incendiary targets two units side by side, and the high explosive can target up to four units in a square. It's an incendiary definitely uh, would set your units on fire, and sometimes it has blinding capabilities as well. So unless you heal your units quickly, uh, these guys can kill your units with ease. Sometimes if they crit, they can do up to 60 damage. So basically one shot in your units. So these guys, they're very high priority on my list, and despite them having a lot of health, they would be one of the first units that I would kill if I ever encountered them, uh, either through missions or just a normal fight. Finally, go out over the heavy weapons, and there we have the SS officer. The ranks of the SS vary from the war march in the sense that they are modeled after the post war, post war Red Corp. In this case, the officer is an Hunter Smush Forer or the SS equivalent of a lieutenant. Only those cleared as a result of an extensive racial and political check can attain such officer level ranks. These guys, they're not very good at all. They're even lower priority uh, for me than the normal soldiers. Because these guys, they only have a pistol and their other skill is to buff either themselves or their allied units. They don't really pose a threat to my friendly units because their pistol can only do single digit damage and their buff ability obviously do not do any damage. So as I said, these guys are a low priority for me, um, similar to the dog. These guys, they're not very high strengthening units. Next, there's the Gestapo officer. Where's the were much represented of the German army, and the Waffen SS represents the Nazi party's military wing. The Gestapo is a Reich secret police, conducting investigations based on denunciations from sympathetic citizens. The Gestapo is committed to rooting out resistance movements from occupied territories. So the Gestapo officers. They're obviously better than the SS officers, but they're not that much better. The so one thing is that these guys have two actions that they can perform each turn. So they're uh, a higher priority uh, to units to kill just simply because of that. Because their two actions, they can take them or their allied units can take them. So if there is a, a AT trooper or a sniper, or some uh, heavy weapon in the same team, those units can use 
this guy's actions to act, which means that those guys will shoot at your units a lot more. So luckily though, for you is that this guy does not have a lot of health. So the only good thing for, uh, for this guy is that they have two actions and that's about it. They can buff their his friendly units, doesn't really matter. And the pistol that he has doesn't do a lot of damage to you. And for me, these guys are around a medium low priority. Okay, next, pack, pack 38. The 5cm successor to the 3.7cm pack 36. The German pack is a straightforward anti-tank weapon with a respectable track record. Despite the fact that it is becoming increasingly outgunned as the world develops, the weapon has proven reliable enough for the Wehrmacht to keep it in active usage. So the pack is basically similar to the Nebelwerfer. However, the pack they do a lot more in terms of area of effect attacks. And since it says that here, they're used for anti tank weapons and if they're used against your foot soldiers you know something bad is gonna happen these guys can do around 30 damage and that 30 damage is in an AOE format so these guys can do two units side by side or four units in a square so similar to the mortar team and the nimble warfare I will prioritize killing the pack as soon as possible which means this is a high priority for me you can set your units on fire uh, as with the Nebelwerfer. Basically, they're just very similar unit to the Nebelwerfer. Okay, next, there's a medic. Every front line formation of the wreck contains medical personnel from an auxiliary stretcher bearers who render basic aid to fully trained medical officers and doctors. In contrast to the Allied combat medics, such personnel are often allowed to carry weapons, hardly surprising given that these men often have to fend for themselves in the thick of the battle. So the medic, despite it being a medic, I have not seen the medic actually heal the soldiers. Normally these, these guys give buffs to their allied units and they shoot their pistols at you. That's it. So since they do not heal their allied units, they're not a very high priority for you to kill. Normally, you want to kill everything but the medic, and then kill the medic last. So, uh, in terms of that, I would give the medic a medium low priority. Uh, actually, I changed my mind and I'll give the medic a low priority on par with the dog. Okay, then we have the pioneer. Not unlike the British sappers, these are the soldiers charged with performing field engineering and construction tasks. Within the German army, they are typically deployed as point men, forming the core of specialized pioneer battal battalions or other similar combat engineering units. So the pioneer, despite them not having uh, a lot of damage and them not having a lot of health, the only thing that that can be detrimental to you is that they can heal all heavy weapon or vehicle units. So after you painstakingly start whittling down the Pack 38 or the Nebel Warfare, these pioneers they use their skill and they heal those, these guys back to uh, full HP. So just for that alone, if you if you ever see a pioneer with the Pack 38 or a Nimble Wolfer or any other vehicle units or heavy weapon units, you would prioritize these guys first. And just for that alone, I would prioritize these guys as very high priority. Otherwise, if they're uh, seen without uh, any heavy weapon or vehicle units, these guys are just a medium priority for me because uh, despite not uh, being able to use their uh, engineering healing ability, they can still use their rifle and their rifle still does quite a bit of damage in the tens. And then there's the Panther 4. 
Although the Panzer IV was envisioned by the early German war doctrine as the heaviest tank in a given Panzer division, reality verified that these assumptions pretty quickly. For example, forcing a change of the main armament from its 75mm hauser like cannon to longer, higher velocity guns. It is estimated that around 200 of these tanks participated in the 1939 invasion of Poland. So, the Panzer IV. Obviously, the Panzer IV is a high priority unit to kill. However, these guys have close to 200 HP. That is insane. Uh, actually, these guys have around 150 HP. It's not 200, but it's still insane. Because these guys have a lot of armor. The normal pistol shots or revolver shots, their damage uh, are significantly lowered. And even rifle shots, their damage are lowered. The only thing that you can uh, kill these guys is an AT gun. It's a similar gun that is used uh, by the AT trooper here, but for or for your units. And one thing to note is that these Panzer IV units, they have four actions. So basically, they can shoot, reload, shoot reload in one single turn and not to mention is that these guys they're often deployed with pioneers sometimes one sometimes even two of the pioneers and you have to kill these pioneers first in order to actual do actual permanent damage to the panzer 4 or else the pioneers will just heal the panzer 4 up to full hp so that is something to uh, really think about if you want to uh, challenge the Panzer IV in a battle. Because the Panzer IV can only be seen in uh, specific missions, so if you don't want to face the Panzer IV, you can simply choose some other mission that do not have the Panzer IV in them. I was uh, able to actually kill the Panzer IV without suffering any casualties, so that was a good thing. However, I did have to use all of my ammo and using all of my ammo in one single fight against the ta this tank is really something to, uh, to evaluate. Sometimes you do not want to use all of your ammo like that quickly, just facing this tank. And next, there's the Sischbacher Trooper. As hand grenade launchers lost popularity sometime after the Great War, the concept of rifle-mounted rifle discharge launchers increasingly gained traction. One such implement is the 1942 Schlesbencher, commonly distributed to German soldiers who then tend to wield it in tandem with their Car 98K rifles. So these guys, basically they have a grenade launcher mounted onto their rifle. And that grenade launcher deals around 30 damage. However, one good thing is that it is not very accurate and usually the shot will miss. Personally, I would rank this guy medium high priority because despite it being missing all the time, if it ever hits your unit, uh, it would deal a lot of damage. And God forbid it ever crits, it would still kill your units in one shot. So that's just something to consider if you are ever uh, trying to leave this guy up for to kill last. Or if you really want to kill the, this guy first, uh, he doesn't really have a lot of uh, health. Around 60 to 70 health. So that's a good thing at least. Okay. Theirs is the Rifleman. Armed with the Car 98K bolt action rifles, these men are the rank and file soldiers of the Warmarsh. Originally designed as shooting shooters, the lowest rank associated with conscripted German men would eventually end up being renamed Panzer Grenadier after the reorganization efforts in October 1942. Despite this change in Nomenclature, their purpose and equipment have remained the same. So the Rifleman, as their name states, they're just a Rifleman. 
they have an ability that uh, can move your units around uh, so they can bring your back units to the front and that can mess up your actions uh, but however these guys their single shot ability can do damage in the tens and that's about it so my rank on these guys is medium priority I've set these guys at medium priority simply because their single shot can still do quite a bit of, of damage especially if they focus one unit and then if your healing is not on par with the damage dealing then your units can die and obviously their uh, shuffling ability can mess your units up all right then there's the rona grunt these men are the members of the ss stern brigade rona a collaborativist military formation part of the pacification unit renafart typically recruited from the nazi occupied areas of russia they have a track record of being called upon for anti-partisan activities so these guys are russian but like the description here says they're nazi occupied areas so these guys not much can be said for these guys because they don't do much damage because just simply you see here in the picture there uh, they only have a pistol and the shovel i mean yeah th that shovel is just for show but so they only they can only use pistol ability on my list this is a medium low priority unit rona gunner this member of the SS Stern Brigade Rona bears heavier arms than his comrades. Though not necessarily due to being senior in rank, in this case, the soldier's weapon of choice is the Russian-made DP-27 machine gun. So just because he has a machine gun, I'm ranking this guy medium priority. Because machine guns are scary since they can do area of effect and they can be buffed and then they sh by other units and if they shoot uh, then your units are in pain the damage on this guy is around 15 to 20. next there's a rona officer a step above typical rona recruits the officer of the brigade are there to lead and enforce an order in the reportedly ill disciplined unit nevertheless their presence has done little to stem the group's infamy so the Rona officer obviously is an officer unit and he has a submachine gun unlike all the other German officer units. Uh, normally uh, he is a medium priority for me but sometimes if you kill all of the units around him and then you bring him over towards you he normally would not want to be close to your units so he would move backwards. So that is something to uh, take into account uh, when facing this guy because if he's ever moving, he's not shooting at your units. Then there's the SDKFC 251. Full designation Sonderkraft Fensuk 251, Special Ordnance Vehicle 251. This half-track vehicle was designed with the intent of transporting squads of mechanics infantry into battle. Aside from serving as a personnel carrier, the design soon found itself adapted into various specialized roles, from anti-aircraft duty to infrared spotting for dedicated combat vehicles. So the, this unit, it's a pain in the ass to deal with, simply because unlike all of the other units, this is the only unit that can spawn more units. This vehicle here, Normally, when you enter the fight, uh, there are pioneers uh, that are beside this vehicle for healing purposes. And if you kill the pioneers first, after there's a spawn left in the field, this vehicle would spawn soldiers. Uh, the soldiers would come out of the vehicle and a rifleman would come out onto the empty spot on the field. Having extra riflemen, even though if it's just a rifleman, it can still hurt your units. 
just because if this vehicle is shooting at you and then you have your rifleman shooting at you, it's just really bad to deal with. Also, in addition to that, is that this vehicle here, it has a lot of armor like the Panzer IV. Not as much as our not as much armor, but still a lot of armor to deal with and a lot of HP. Around 120 HP to deal with, and those 120 HP are not easy to chuck down. Personally, I would focus this guy, but if there are pioneers, you still have to kill the pioneers first and then deal with this uh, vehicle. Meanwhile, you have to manage all of the riflemen that spawn from this vehicle. Yeah, and that is a pain to deal with. Okay, then there's the marksman. Nicknamed Pigeon Fanciers by Varsovians for their affinity for high altitude firing nests, these marksmen have been known to recruit from military and civilian stock alike, often acting as saboteurs and infiltrators within areas controlled by the uprising. As such, many resistance fighters consider them something akin to boogeymen, often to the point of paranoia. So the marksmen, they're basically the AD troopers without reloading. The marksmen are snipers uh, that can hit your unit for a lot of damage. Uh, sometimes in the 20s and sometimes even in the 30s. In addition to that, they do not need to reload. However, a good thing is that these guys do not have a lot of HP. Even on extreme difficulty, these guys only have 50, 55 HP at most. So normally, your units can use AT guns to kill these guys as quickly as possible. Possibly having a good result is that these guys die without ever firing. But if they do ever fire, you would want them to die right after they fire. So in all cases, you should not let these guys fire twice in a single combat. And obviously, personally, I would rank these as high priority to kill. Spotter Spotters or forward observers serve as specialists in charge of surveying the battlefield. Their tactical assessments usually precede artillery strikes, which, made, which many spotters have the authority to request of according to their judgment. Unlike the description here, they do not have the ability uh, to call in artillery strikes. Their role in the combat is to disrupt your units. Uh, they have an ability that targets all of your units and suppresses them, but only two random units of your uh, four units get suppressed. And that suppression is guaranteed. So these are disrupt units. They cannot uh, hit you, they cannot do damage to you at all. In addition to other units around him, uh, he provides support for all of his other uh, friendly units to deal damage to you. Despite that, I would still rank him as medium low priority to kill, simply because he does not have an attacking ability. He does not do any damage to you, meaning that you would rather want to use your ammo and your actions on those can actually do damage to you. Next, there's the officer. Fearing the markings of a lieutenant or the lowest officer rank of the war march, such soldiers of import are distinguishable from the enlisted personnel by different insignia and style of uniform. Traditionally understood as a position of authority, the rank is nonetheless capacious enough to include everything from infantry leaders to assistant surgeons. The officer, similar to the SS officer, right here. Just the officer, it is very uh, easy to, to deal with. These guys, they also did provide support to infantry units, and he ha also has a revolver uh, that can damage your units, but that damage is in the single digits. So, uh, my priority list down of him is medium low priority. Actually, I would put him as low priority, similar to the SS officer and the dog. Nothing else much to say about this guy. Normally, he would just buff his uh, units or himself 
and no damage from him is ever impactful to where you need to kill him first. Okay, we have the Sapper here, technically part of the Pioneer Battalion. These soldiers specialize in demolitions instead of fuel repairs. Unlike their more engineering-oriented counterparts, they carry explosive charges which they use to, do to destroy enemy cover and fortifications. The Sappers, they can destroy your barricades and your covers, so these guys are medium priority for me. Even though that they can destroy your uh, covers, it's not too much of a deal because not all units are behind covers in the first place and if they ever do display a cover well too bad it's fine uh, you carry on with your fight sometimes there are other more important units uh, to kill beside this guy that can deal more damage to your units and sometimes there aren't uh, which means that you will target this guy but personally medium priority for him next we have the Jaeger, usually translated as hunter or ranger, Jaeger is an umbrella term to used to describe any kind of German light infantry, be it skirmishers, scouts, sharpshooters, or runners. Such troopers may thus include marksmen from many different military backgrounds and specialty divisions. Now these guys, sometimes they will shoot their rifle, but sometimes they would use their turn to move. If they are ever moving, then they're not shooting at you, which is a good thing. That means they're a medium priority for me. Normally, like with the riflemen, these guys do decent damage to your units, but it is only single target and no area of effect ability is with this unit. So that is definitely a good thing. But this guy definitely has more HP than the Rifleman, which is a, a thing to consider when you're dealing with him and the Rifleman in the same battle. But yeah, medium priority for me. Okay, finally we have the SS Veteran. Veterans of the Waffen SS with many engagements under their belt. Much like their parent organization, these battle-hardened soldiers have a reputation for methods involving cunning and cruelty. So, the SS veteran, as you've seen in this picture, they have a chuckable grenade and a submachine gun. The submachine gun obviously does not do that much damage. The only thing here to worry about is this grenade. This thing can do around the 20 damage, rather damage in the 20s, but rarely does it ever do uh, more than 30 damage. Uh, the SS veteran is a medium high priority for me to kill. Despite it having uh, more health than some of the other infantry units, it's still quite a, a higher priority because this guy, you can just whittle him down with area of effect and then you can just shoot him down. Okay, I'll be right back with the last unit uh, that I'm gonna cover in this video. Alright, here is the final uh, enemy unit that I'm covering in this video. It is a Wolf Gerat 42. It was recently came out in the Dolskog content update. So it's a Wolf Gerat 42. Technically part of the Nebelwerfer family, it's a Wolf Gerat 42. It's a unique type of enemy consisting of two separate elements, the weapon and the operator. Turning the Valpreter early prevents the launcher from firing, but if you wait too long, the Wolfgarat 42 will rain fire upon your team for devastating AoE damage. So obviously I have not seen this enemy in action, but from the description alone, I would prioritize this unit highly. So I would rank him as high priority along with all of the other heavy weapon units. From this description here, this is a heavy weapon unit and uh, a lot of AOE damage too, so very high priority uh, on this unit. So yeah, that's all there is uh, for the enemies. This video is quite long because there are over 30 uh, enemy units to cover and hopefully I have uh, answered a lot of questions that you guys may have on the enemy units. Oh, and if you guys know about the last en enemy units that I'm missing, 
uh, please let me know in the comments below. I would very much uh, appreciate it. Yeah, this will be the end of the video here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from this video. And I'll be sure to see you guys in my other series where I cover a lot of other games. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.